Hey folks, Sylvius here. Uh, this is a new entry into my um, drawn blank indie games uh, playlist. So this is a uh, Din's Curse. Uh, it does have an expansion DLC. The uh, the line between those two things is kind of vague these days. Uh, called Demon War. So the uh, that is currently active right now. Um, Din's Curse is from Soldak Entertainment. You can see their little thing down there. Woo! Uh, they also, it's like running off of an engine for another game they made called The Depths of Pearl. Peril, sorry. I said that wrong. Um, <clears throat> this is a dungeon crawler hack and slash type game. Um, think kind of like Diablo. The original Depths of Pearl was uh, more like Diablo. This one is actually 100% completely randomly generated. Uh, the game has no actual end either. Uh, but let's hop into this. So you can see there's a whole bunch of keys. <laughs> so we've got a new character. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven classes. Uh, the Demon Hunter comes with the expansion. So you get the other six um, if you go solo. And you also get the hybrid. I always play hybrids. By the way, this is like a really good multiplayer, kind of like just having fun, uh, like on a LAN party type game. Uh, so you can't actually see what these guys are unless you go into the hybrid thing. Now, the warrior, if you pick the warrior, you would get these three skill trees. Weapons Master, Gladiator, Defender. If you pick the wizard, you get Fire Mage, Ice Mage, and Magician. When I go hybrid, I get to take any two from any two or any of the various things. So I can go like Warrior, Weapons Master, and Ranger Druid or something like that if I wanted to. Um, that's what the hybrid lets you do. It lets you take part of any of the six or any of the seven and combine it with another one. You could theoretically go Weapons Master uh, Gladiator, which would just make you a worse warrior because you'd only get uh, two-thirds of the warrior's effects. So uh, I don't want to spend too much time going over them but I'll just pick some at random to kind of showcase what we have. It's so like the Weapons Master, these are all things that are like inherent. So basic attack ability, it can wear leather armor, it can wear male armor, can use maces, swords, axes, and daggers. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and this also includes the two-handed variants. Um, and then on the side here, we get their attack bonuses. You're more likely to hit your targets with bonus attacks per point of dex and you bring more hurt to your enemies with bonus damage per point of strength. So strength would normally increase your damage, but if you're a weapons master, strength increases your damage even more. It gives you 0.2% max damage. Gladiator, for instance, gives you the same thing, but it gives you additional health per point of vitality instead of the chance to hit, and Defender gives, you know, same thing here. Is it the same bonus? It is, in fact, the same bonus. Um, if you were going to, like, you know, Assassin here, the Assassin gets the health bonus from the Vitality, but it is only 0.5 versus the other one's 0.8. Uh, and so on. And then the last thing you'll see here is their way of getting bonus mana. So successful hits against a foe will bolster your mana supply, whereas the Defender gets gain extra mana each time you block or parry. The Rogue gets gain extra mana when you cause critical hits and kill enemies. The Trickster gets faster mana regeneration during combat, and so on. So everybody has various ones of these. Um, like you can see, for instance, here, the Weapons Master does not gain the ability to use a shield. That's granted through the Gladiator and also the Defender. So if you just went pure Weapons Master, you could not use a shield. Uh, at the same time, you'll notice the Gladiator doesn't have the skill to use blunt weapons. Whereas the, uh, the Defender does, in fact, have that, but it doesn't have the ability to use daggers. And so on. Uh, the Defender also, if you go down their skill tree, actually does get the ability to wear plate armor. And I also think the, uh, yeah, the Reaver in the Demon Hunter gets to wear plate armor. And they're the only two that get to wear plate armor. If that's important to you, so be it. Uh, if, I'll just kind of click and do, like, um... Uh, Sorcerer, for instance. So the Sorcerer gets to use Staff Weapons and can wear Capes. Defense bonus per point of Dex and Mana bonus per point of Intelligence. 
If you go to the priest, the priest classes get a mana bonus per point of spirit, which is the other, like, the other type of intelligence type of thing. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then just kind of like, yeah, this is a skill tree, so, you know, as you put more points into it, you eventually move down the thing. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. In fact, I'm going to be playing a character who is an ice mage mixed with a... Thinking a warlock? Hmm, this is tough. Alright, we're gonna try the warlock. Although I want, uh, because the ice mage looks stupid, I'm going to set my primary as the warlock. Ah, I guess they all look stupid. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. So, what I'm getting here, just so that you guys can see here uh, ability to wear capes, ability to use staffs, uh, defense per point of dex. Uh, extra mana per point of intelligence, mana regen per point of intelligence, and uh, potions and drinks replenish more mana than normal. And then on the uh, warlock side of things, I get the ability to use staffs, the ability to wear capes, bonus per point of dex, mana regen per point of intelligence, and uh, knowledge refills the magic well with faster mana regen per point of intelligence, so even more. Uh, I'm sorry, that was maximum mana right there. Whoops, my bad. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, we want to make this one the Ice Mage. So now we're going to name my character. I always play female characters. I'm going to name my character... I'm actually going to pause the video while I think of what to name my character. Okay, got it. So I recently started watching a new anime. I'm going to name my character Nobuna. Now. We got a whole bunch of world building options here. Um, I can't pick champion until I hit level 25 and so on. So I could start the world at any level I wanted to. So I could start it to the monsters are level 18, but I'm still going to be level zero. And that means I'm just going to die. So we're going to keep it at, uh, sometimes I actually like to start it at two so that you, things go a little bit faster. We can control world size. I'm going to stick it with small. Uh, and then this affects the pace of how fast quests advances and how fast monsters respawn. Um, faster paces get you a EXP bonus, so I'm going to go with fast. Likewise, we got the same thing with uh, the NPC pacing options. I just got to keep that at normal. We can make the monsters more dangerous, but there's less monsters. We can make it so that there's more monsters, but they're weaker. Uh, we can start an invasion mode, or we can start low stress mode. But low stress mode gets you um, less ESP, and I don't like that. I'm gonna leave all of them off. Uh, whoops, I actually did not mean to do that. So in we go. Now, uh, before I get to this, when I was making my character, there was a whole bunch of like alternative options that were basically make the game harder. I didn't pick any. So there's a robust help system in this game. Uh, welcome to Zen's Curse Help System. There you go. So this is the town. This town is randomly generated. It's different every time. There will always be these three dudes. And, uh, Din is the god here. He's the one that cursed you. Uh, the objective of each game or new world is to save the town. It's a dangerous time for a small human town. They need a hero. That's you, thanks to Din, whether you like it or not. You have to save the town when you have completed all their quests. You also have another goal. Din has cursed you. He will not release you from his service until you have redeemed yourself. Talk to Din in town for more information. Left clicking, yeah, that just tells you how to move. Control. Okay, good. So, every town is slightly different. Um, they'll have little houses with people in them. Uh, sometimes these people will give you quests. Sometimes these people will do other things. Uh, this one comes with a graveyard, it looks like. Usually, there's kind of not a lot. You can also see up there there's a mini-map. So, like, this person does, in fact, have a quest for me. He wants me to find the Fabled Relic on level 1. So, we'll just take that quest. Um, and we've got various vendors here. We've got a vendor who sells... I can just show you. Like, food-type items. We've got a weaponsmith who uh, sells, obviously, weapons. And we've got an armorsmith who sells armor and also has a quest. He wants me to gather three marble slabs for him, which will take that quest. I am the god Din. Yes. Then you serve no gods in your pathetic, despicable life. 
I have chosen to offer you redemption through service to me. Din sucks. He wants me to kill six blood clan orcs. Now you can have, by pushing Q, six quests. And you can cancel them if you want. By the way, when you're playing solo, most menus will pause the game. If you're playing with other people, opening up a menu will not pause the game. Uh, most quests you can complete even if you haven't actually picked the quest up. So like, the War Master here is going to, for instance, kill Feast. Feast is going to be on level 6, which is in the parentheses there. Regardless of whether or not I pick it up. Uh, other quests, though, you actually need to pick them up for the quest to, like, progress. Uh, like, Elizabeth, who is apparently on level 1 of this dungeon over here, will not talk to me unless I have that quest. So, like, looking at these, I can't speak 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure the marble slabs, the fabled relic, and the important information from Elizabeth wouldn't show up unless I picked up the, cl the quests. Uh, the Blood Clan orcs would be there, and I'm pretty sure the kill count would count for them. Uh, and I'm not 100% certain about scout outing level 6, but, you know, it's good to play it safe, so I took it. Each town usually has four main quest givers. The War Master, the Steward, the Apocrythary, and Din, the god that cursed you. In general, they each carry different types of quests. And sometimes other people will offer quests. Unlike most games, Din's Curse has very little has a very dynamic world. <laughs> I read that wrong. Each and every town will be very different without giving away any spoilers when an NPC says do this quick or something might happen. Well, whatever you that something is will probably happen if you don't do something about it. When an NPC says hurry, they really mean uh, they really do mean it. The game will change depending on what you do in the town when you arrive. What you do, what you don't do, and even what the monsters do. So keep on your toes and solve the town's problems as quick as you can. You're the hero after all. Uh, inventory screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. There can be many vendors or even no vendors in town. There are also various different types of vendors like small items vendors, armorsmith, weaponsmith. There's also a gambler over here too, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Um, he's usually in the corner somewhere. I think we, I just walked past him. Yeah, the gambler. The gambler sells items that are magical, uh, but you don't know what they are. And by the way, those little town gates will teleport you back to the main gate. So just a couple of things. This is the map, and I'm going to speak while we're on the map real quick. Uh, actually, bad example. I'm going to do it here. So on each of the levels of this dungeon, and we don't know how deep this dungeon is at this point, but on each of the levels of this dungeon, there'll be a like town gate that once you use it once, it will teleport you back to the town at the main gate, and then you can use the main gate to then teleport back to that level. So if for some reason I like didn't find the one on level 1, but I found the one on level 2, I could teleport back and forth from 2, but not to 1. Comprende? Good. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. We're not talking anything crazy. So now, we started with a crude short staff, and then these a healing potion and food. Healing potions, when you chug them, they heal out immediately. Food gives you healing over time. And we also started with one skill point. Um, and you can see I can either put my one skill point into Arctic Shard, which slows enemies, um, does 5 to 15 cold damage and costs 10 mana, or I could put it into the Warlock Shadow Bolt, which does 5 to 15, doesn't slow enemies, and only costs 8. I'm actually going to put it on that one. And then I drag it down there, and the way that works is... Um, if I right click, I use whatever's in that one, and I can use the arrow keys to rotate them. Pretty simple. So now we're gonna go down here. And now I'm in the, uh, the dungeon. The dungeons will look different every time. Uh, right now I'm using melee attacks, obviously. And I'm kind of sucking. All right, go away. There we go. Uh, Alt will take off the, uh, you know, the thing. So right now you can see on my map, I have no idea where anything is. So the more you explore, the more you reveal the like fog and fog of war. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this game is, uh, you, and you can't always tell, but um, the monsters will often be hostile to each other. Many objects in the world can be used and are destroyed, so keep a lookout for these types of objects. Many times these are useful, but not always. For example, some things are poisonous or are holding up the ceiling. Causing large explosions near the support beams isn't the smartest action to take. Also beware, some types of monsters know how to use some of the objects in the game. 
The skill screen? Yeah, okay. Now, this dude here has got the little green crap around him, and he's a... Uh, you can see by his name being green, he's a champion. So champions are just stronger, uh, they drop better stuff, and, you know, they're just better in that way. Now, these items I've picked up, uh, I can't equip this pair of boots because I don't have the strength, nor do I have the skill to wear mail armor. Uh, I could use this club, I think, or no. Perhaps I can't, because I can't actually use clubs. Yeah, I can't use maces. Oops. So nothing can be done there. Uh, sometimes enemies will just spawn as champions, and there's a level up higher than that called uh, Elite, I believe. Um, so sometimes enemies will just spawn as that. I just blew that crap. <clears throat> um, other times enemies will, um, when they're fighting each other, if one enemy kills enough enemies, other enemies, he'll like level up himself into a champion. It's kind of an interesting concept. Now I just level up. So at level up, you get five uh, points that you can spread around here. Um, Strength is melee damage. As a basically a pure mage character, that's not important to me. Um, Dex is my defense and also my chance to, you can actually see it here, chance to hit basically and chance to inflict deep wounds and magic crushing blows. Uh, vitality is health, health regen, and stamina. Stamina goes down when you're running when enemies are near you. Intelligence is mana, mana regen, and spell critical hit as uh, chances, and also how far you can see in the dark. And then spirit is mana regen and also elemental resistances. Um, and then also just boosts up your mana a little bit too. So it's good to kind of do both a little bit. Um, I, however, get those bonus effects from intelligence. So I will see much greater gains from just kind of going pure intelligence a lot of times. Um, so that's that. And then we also got two skill points. So at this point, um, each time you put a skill point into one of these things, the cost increases. So if I wanted to take uh, my what, Shadow Bolt from 5 to 15 to 10 to 31, uh, it would take two skill points. Right now, everything's dying from one hit, so I don't think that's necessary. Um, I could put it into one of these curses, although I'm not sure how exactly useful those are. I basically took Warlock to get the summon minions to kind of screen enemies. Um, in fact, actually, at this point, nothing looks particularly good, so I'm thinking I might either take one of these curses for boss monsters. Nah, I'm gonna store my points. Or store my points was my other option, and I chose store my points. Now this is the gate I was talking about. Gate is activated. I'm now back in town. I can now teleport. You'll also see that when I clicked on that, we can see that it goes down to level 7, and each of these ones with the little, uh, like, green asterisks are ones that, um, have a quest level. Ooh. Got a hand fix. Now, sometimes there's hidden passages. So, you do sometimes want to just randomly click on walls. Oh, that's that person I need to get that crap from. Get information. Now, Oh, he critically hit me. We got some dead bodies I can loot. And a whole pile of uh, things. Hold the alt key down to see all of the items on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Character screen, skill screen, items, rarities. Items come in many different rarities or types. Normal, common, rare, set, elite, artifacts, and legendary. Normal items are just that, normal. Common and rare magic items have some random magical enchantments. Uh, enhancements with rare items usually having more. Set items belong to a group of items. If you can find and equip all of the items from a set, you will gain some bonus enhancements. Many sets also have a partial bonus if you can equip part of the set. Elite items are items that are named, have enhancements that are always the same, and are usually very powerful. By the way, when they say always the same, they mean like if it deals fire damage, it will always deal fire damage, but the degree of that fire damage can change. Uh, Artifact items are very similar to elite items, but usually have at least one extra enhancement, so they're even more powerful. And legendary items are the Holy Grail. They are the same as their artifact counterparts, except they have an additional random magical modifier. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, level up, yep. And buying skills, okay, good. I'm going to pick up those cloth gloves. Normally I only pick up items if they're magical. 
but at this early stage in the game, um, I don't have equipment, so even though common stuff is usually junk, it's still better than nothing. And we can also, as you saw from before, you can uh, right click, although I'm not going to be able to wear this belt because it's a male type belt. And I don't think I can use shields either. And I can't wear this belt either because it's leather. I'm possibly regretting this character uh, <laughs> due to my inability to wear anything. There we go, what do we got? Money! In the world of Alaria, it comes in the form of copper pieces, silver pieces, and gold pieces. 100 equals 1, and so on. Skill types, yeah, it's just going to explain the concept of passive skills. I think we all know that. Secret stash. Sometimes, by the way, when you open up things, they have traps. Like that. <laughs> no! Crap, I just died. <laughs> so... When you die, you're dead. Right now I have an EXP debt. So while you have an EXP debt, you gain experience at one half the normal rate. The other uh, half goes to paying back your debt. If you go back to where you died and you pick up the item that uh, was there called a soul stone, you get most of it back. Death is inevitable in Din's Curse. When you die, you can always resurrect through Din's power, though, unless you're playing hardcore. When killed, you incur a small EXP debt penalty. This means you get less experience until you work off the debt. If you go and retrieve your soul stone that dropped when you died, the EXP debt will be decreased. Soul stones are not saved, so be sure to pick them up quick. Uh, yeah. So, I'm trying to get the soul stone. Alright. Yeah, so now I paid back a larger portion of my debt. Although, that still massively sucked. I'm kind of irritated that that happened. And also, I'm still just picking up huge amounts of equipment that I can't use, which is cool. It was, uh, that was good timing, though. I liked how that happened kind of right as I said it. Down the stairs, down. Actually, do I have any more quests to do on this level? Find the Fable Relic. Okay. So I do still need to find the Fable Relic on this level, so I don't want to go down yet. Certain quests, like, kill a certain amount of enemies can sometimes... Eh. People in town are now starving. That was the Relic, by the way. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to go all the way back or just go down to level 2. Sometimes it's not a terrible idea to just stick your head down the stairs and see if the gate is, like, very nearby. Because sometimes it is. Ugh. Alright, well that belt's probably junk, so I'm gonna throw that belt in. Well, I mean, that was a common belt that I also couldn't equip, so keeping that was pointless. Uh, but yeah, so sometimes you can actually... Uh, complete quests on other floors if you, they're like asking for certain items and stuff like that. It's not always a guarantee, so I mean, you shouldn't like plan on it, but sometimes you might get kind of lucky and it works out. Now, keep in mind that over there is fire, and if I run through that, I will burn, so wait for the fire to go out kind of situation. Throw this on the floor, and I want to see if the staff is better than what I have. Uh, and it's not. And another thing you should know, well, I, I did not mean to throw that club on the floor. I meant to throw that boot on the floor. Uh, in single player, just running over, Naria Potion Vendor has arrived in town and will leave shortly. Yep, sometimes you get visitors like that. Uh, when you're playing single player, just running over the gold will pick it up. Uh, if you're playing multiplayer, you actually have to manually click on it. Like I just did right there. Uh, do we have anything going on on level 2? We have nothing going on on level 2. So there's actually no reason for me to stay here. Um, if I was a rogue, I could pick this lock. I could smash it down with my club, or I could cast spells at it. Uh, since I had nothing to do on that level, I also just went straight down. Sometimes doors and chests are locked or stuck. If something is locked, you can use it. And you use it, you will... Uh, 
you will use up one skeleton key automatically on unlock it. If you don't have a key though, and you can use your lockpick skill if you're a rogue, or you have to bash down the door, or bash open a chest. Bashing is the only way to open a stuck door. To bash something, simply click on it to select it and then attack it with any damage type skill you have, including your main attack skill. Default is one. Beware though, bashing things open makes a lot of noise which will alert nearby monsters and give you a surprise and penalty for a few seconds. It does in fact do that. I just blew a bunch of crap up over there. Ah! That was a trap. By the way, so like, oh, that was also a trap. <laughs> I have one out of 64 HP. All right, so we're gonna eat some fruit. And I should be able to equip that cloth shawl. There we go. Um. If I died on this level right now, that would be quite inconvenient. Can't actually... okay. Oop, he just blew up all the crap. You can see up here I've got the surprise penalty. It's decreased. Ah, uh, I'm on fire. Ooh, and now I'm stunned. Check that out. Yeah, these guys are probably kind of quickly reaching, uh, like, power- ooh, now that's an elite. And elites are quite dangerous. Oh man, I almost died, because I did not know where my zero key was on my keyboard. <laughs> I can't wear the leather vest, so let's jump. Let's throw it on the floor. Two armor, four defense, fine items chance, not bad. And we'll take these soft leather leggings, but I also can't equip. Alright, nothing in here. So we are on, what are we on? We're on level three right now. And I do have to gather three marble slabs on level three. Fine in combat presents, yeah. Item fine, magic fine, critical hit, crushing blow, deep wounds, bonuses are slightly misleading. They represent the bonus compared to normal. For example, a 100% bonus to critical hits means a 100% better chance than normal, not a 100% chance. So you have your normal critical chance is 5% and you have a 100% bonus, your final value would be 10. Awesome, gate found. Oh, I thought the, uh, the magma dude was the the green guy. Alright, let's go back to town. Um, we're going to go to the weaponsmith, and we are going to trade, and he will identify all of my stuff for a certain amount of gold, which is fine. It saves me time of actually clicking it. And we're going to, what is it? Press space, order, okay. There we go. Space over it. Settles. So basically, everything I looted, I can't use. Uh, I should probably keep those. But I'm gonna live stupidly and just sell them. Uh, now this dude has nothing I can, I can buy. The vendor might have some stuff. Get PC out of debt. I have let my finances get out of control and I really need your help. Uh, can you please donate some money to help me get out of debt? Okay. So I just donate that dude some money, and now he's no longer in debt. <laughs> and I just get some, uh, reputation. He, however, has nothing I want to buy. What's this guy? Okay, he's starving. Can help me, I will likely starve to death. To help either pay off my debts by donating or give me some food. So I forget exactly how I give him food, but donating is just as easy. By the way, if I didn't donate to him or give him food, he would legitimately eventually die. Um, even better, instead of actually just starving to death, because he might do that, uh, he might also, though, decide that he has to go into the dungeon to make money. Um, so if he goes into the dungeon and successfully does his thing, lost a family heirloom on level 4, uh, he'll come back and he won't starve to death. But he might fail and then just get killed by monsters. <laughs> and then die in that case. So Mr. Apocrythary is starving, that means I just need to donate, and I need to donate the to him. Get my reputation up, 
and this dude wants me to kill Feast, who's on level 6. And what do we got here? There are some rare items in the world of Alaria that are that actually have some level of intelligence. This intelligence can take different forms, some good and some bad, but all items with Ego have one thing in common, a 25% bonus to damage, armor, or defense for weapons, armors, or shields, respectively. I didn't even notice I picked one of those up. Reputation. Reputation is very important in Din's curse, since Din will not release you from his curse until you have gained enough reputation. You can gain reputation in only one way, by solving quests. However, doing quests for Din and normal townspeople are generally worth more reputation. You can lose reputation in multiple ways, though. Anytime you fail a quest, even ones you haven't accepted. Anyone from town dies, you buy items from less reputable source, or you dig up a grave, you will lose some reputation. As an added bonus, each time you go up a reputation level, you'll get a unique item as a reward. I also leveled up here, so... Let me do the, uh... We're gonna go Intelligence, Intelligence, Spirit, Spirit, and... Vid. Now! I have four points, which lets me get access to the next level. So I could do the Summon Scree at this point. Um, however, I can only have one type of uh, Summon Monster out of the time, you'll see there. Uh, so I either go with the Screes, or the Furies, or the Chaos Lords. I'm thinking the Chaos Lord sounds pretty fun, so I might just save my points up until I can get that. Uh, meanwhile, though, I do actually want to kind of fiddle around with this. What do I got in here? I actually have nothing remotely useful in here. And you can also subtract points, although it costs you money. Yeah, I could enhance the following cold skills. Arctic Shard, Frost Nova, Ice Storm, Frostbite, and also some ones from other classes. But, I don't actually have any of those skills right now. So, this is kind of annoying. Maybe I should take the screen? Hmm. I'm going to put the two points into that, and then again, I'm just going to store the remaining two points. And we're back down to level three. I do still have to find slabs. You do not want to stand next to exploding barrels when they explode. sure where I'm supposed to find these slabs at this point. And sometimes those levers do that. Sometimes those levers will trigger a trap on you that just teleports you to a lower level, which is awesome because then sometimes you just teleport all the way down and then die. And that is an improvement because not only does it have a higher DPS, it also boosts my spirit by one. And that makes sense, since my old one was, in fact, a piece of junk. Those leprechaun dudes steal your gold. Try not to let them hit you. There we go. You'll get most of it back. Ooh, and I picked up a pouch. Now, a pouch is a little storage item, and you stick it down here, and now I have four additional spots. There we go. Mr. Champion, you're dead. And there's one of our marble slabs, and there's the staircase down, but I still need more marble slabs before I'm done. Bags are pretty critical to your inventory. Your main inventory, the four slots in the lower right of the screen, and your stashes can only contain bags. Other items go into these bags, except for those that are equipped. Right click on a bag to see what's in it or put items in it. You cannot put any items into a bag that is itself in another bag. You also cannot move bags that have items in them. Ooh. Dodge! And I think there's another dude. Yeah, two uh, champions in, in one room. A little, little sketchy. <clears throat> Still only one of those slabs so far. Kind of hoping the other ones don't make me go far. Let's open up this cauldron. Fresh fruit, fresh fruit, and quality fresh fruit. I'm trying to conserve my mana a little bit at this point. 
It's not going so well. And this door is locked, so we're gonna go through it the old-fashioned way. Ah, you suck. Not only was there nothing in here, but the trap also hurt me. I'm probably gonna need to eat. Oh, that was actually really stupid of me, because I'm basically like one kill away from a level up. Or not. I'm three kills away from a level up. Or four. There we go. Got our marble slabs, though. Sometimes there may be uh, more than the amount. Well, there's pretty much always going to be more than the amount you need. Also, while we're at it, we leveled up. There we go. And I'm going to just hold on to my four points. Now, do I have anything going on on level four? I need to find a lost family heirloom. Okay. We're going to go turn in what we have, though. Stable cl uh, cloth robe of substance was added. Which is cool, because I wasn't wearing anything in that slot. Alright. Now these obelisks uh, give you a, like, temporary effect. Stone skin's gonna last for a minute. Decreases the damage you take by 50%. Pretty self-explanatory. These little dudes, um, when you kill them, they split into smaller ones. And that little mushroom thing there will shoot out a poison cloud when it gets destroyed. So you kind of don't want to hit them with melee attacks. You also don't want to, like, just casually walk right through it like I just did. That's also a bad idea. Uh, that's a even bigger one. So he's gonna break into two medium-sized ones. I think I got this, uh... Oh, uh, and the other moderately annoying thing about those guys is each of the ones that, like, spawn have a chance of becoming a champion themselves. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying. My stone skin wore off. Alright, what do we got? Nothing? Yep, we got nothing. An arrow slit trip. But I'm doing a particularly poor job of fighting. <laughs> there we go. Evil pool. It cursed me. That's cool. Evil pools are kind of a random. They give you either a random effect. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. In this case, it wasn't. So for 30 seconds, I got a 20% reduction to all of my main stats, which is not great. Let me get rid of that junk food to avoid it. And we'll equip that since I don't have anything currently in that slot. Yeah, so it's going to make it significantly harder for me to uh, hit enemies and then make me hit enemies for less damage while I'm cursed. That's a trap. I'm going to run through it just so you can see it. Hey, it cursed me again. Now I've been double cursed. The town has almost finished building a defensive ice totem. That probably means there's a quest I should be going to pick up. Meanwhile, though, I'm just dying. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Did I just keep missing? There we go. Alright. Got some skeletons. And that letter was kind enough to open up that door for me. Got a nice little chest here. That also had a trap. And the upside was that the trap killed that skeleton. <laughs> Gonna eat. I 
finish this town in this video, but that's uh, looking like it's not going to happen. I think I underestimated how much I needed to explain concepts. So I think after we clear this level is when I'm going to uh, call this video. It is uh, cool that we just got another pouch, though. Equip that. We got a new help topic. Be very wary of acid... Pools of acid and acid-based attacks. Acid does way more durability damage to your items than anything else. Acid pools look like small pools of green liquid. Yeah. So if you walk through that, it'll damage your crap. I guess that was a quest. Feast has started an uprising of scavengers in the demonic tome. I think it was head level 6. Yeah, if you don't kill the boss monsters, they'll do things like that. Like it, like the game said, and like I said also, Din's Curse is a very dynamic game. If you leave the monsters alone, they'll do weird things. They'll form alliances, they'll cause uprisings, they'll send soldiers to attack the town uh, and kill like the townsfolk, which is super duper annoying. Because they can kill like the quest givers, for instance. <laughs> um, which does wonders for your trying to turn in the quest crap. Rose, the steward, is starving. Now, I actually know where the stairs down are. I'm not even going to break that open. I know where the stairs down are, and I know where the gate is. And I've done the only thing I need to do on this quest, so... On this floor. So, actually, all we need to do is just head back at this point. Nice little health stone there. You just click on those, and they restore your health. There's the stairs down, and the little portal thing is right here. That should be good on him. There we go. And what else do you want? Finish the defensive ice totem. I need some supplies to finish building a defensive ice totem. Having a defensive ice totem in town will make us much safer when you aren't around. Find 15 sprite tails. And he wants me to deal with the scavenger uprising. Oh, and I got reputation level 1 and got Siglio's charm. Which is requires me to be level 6, so I can't use it at the moment but it's one of the set items. So if I wear two of those set items, I'll get six intelligence. If I wear all five, I'll get 12. Up it. I'm going to stop by the armor smith. I just walked through that piece of ice, which slowed me down. That's kind of funny. We'll identify everything, and then we'll sell all the scrap. I'm gonna hold on to the uh, Siglio's charm. Uh, anyway, folks, so, I mean, that's where I want to stop it at this video, because we still have to go do... Oh, you know what? I have to turn in that family heirloom. There we go. Alright. So, yeah, we just have, uh, some stuff on level 6 to do, and it's possible I can do that thing, the defensive ice totem, by killing monsters on other levels. If it turns out I can't, I'll have to go back to level 2. But that is, in fact, for next time, so we're gonna just save and quit. And then, uh, so that was the first video of Din's Curse. Um, this game doesn't have an actual end, but by playing solo, I'll probably eventually hit a point where I just can't proceed. So we'll, you know, just kind of go for a couple of rounds. Anyway, people, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, Twitter, Facebook. I'll see you folks later.